Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, yes, as Fiona says, my name is James Hamilton. I work within the system transformation team at Smith & Nephew um, in our wound care division. So, uh, interestingly, listening to Chris, Chris's sessions, I think there'll be some synergies across, across the two. Um, but the intent of the next few slides, really, is just to highlight some of the partnership work that's been going on and collaboration between ourselves at Smith & Nephew and the Sustainable Healthcare Coalition. Uh, and then to share um, a bit about what sustainability looks like in practice for ourselves. So, um, sustainability at Smith & Nephew, in terms of our published data, our annual reports are out there to see, um, which cover off, um, crucially, like at the heart of what we do is around people, the planet and our products. And on the screen you can see, um, basically on the side, the progress that's been made under Scopes 1 and Scopes 2 um, to make inroads into reductions in emissions and um, wasted reductions as well. And we absolutely, as a manufacturer, understand that cradle to grave approach that we need to, attack, uh, need to take when it comes to uh, manufacturing, logistics, packaging, and doing all that part really well and, and continuing to make improvements. Um, however, an important part that we're really focusing in on our, in terms of our sustainability initiatives would be how a product is actually used in clinical practice. Um, because we know if products used at the, on the wrong patient at the wrong time or incorrectly, that has a, a massive impact on the environment and can be detrimental versus those net zero targets. Um, I suppose conversely, if we get it right, we have, have the uh, ability to accelerate, um, accelerate that agenda around sustainability. So it's about evolving the conversation, really. And where we're focusing um, specifically at the moment is around our post-operative journey. Um, so when we consider uh, sustainable surgical care uh, and improving healthcare outcomes, uh, there's clearly some challenges that we need to address. Um, and I think one of those um, challenges is striking the balance um, between product usage being safe and effective as well as being sustainable. And I think um, listening to the sessions earlier, there's been a lot about change management. And actually, when we're making sustainability changes, no one wants care compromised as a result. So it's really important we re reflect on that. So to give a bit more um, meat to the bone around where, where we're working. So... For those who want, so when we're talking about post-operative healthcare um, outcomes, and we, we know in the evidence that it's really well documented about that we have an associated risk factors, and post-surgery there are a cohort of patients who would be deemed high risk. Um, some of the risk factors will be procedural, some patient, um, so like high BMI, um, ASA scores, and we know that this leads to a pre propensity to then have a surgical site complication. So with that surgical site complication, then we tend to look at that So from patient outcomes perspective first. So we know that they'll have poorer uh, outcomes uh, in terms of uh, morbidity, mortality, as a result where complications occur. And then from a system-wide strain, we, t we have tended historically to look at um, and focus on things like readmission, length of stay, but how that impacts on um, hospital efficiencies in terms of throughput um, and what that means on, in terms of things like waiting lists. However, as you'll all attest to and know, um, the, these complications and surgical site complications definitely have a detrimental um, bearing when it comes to sustainability due to the um, additional in interventions um, that create a carbon footprint. And I think, again, one thing we probably agree on is around where we need to intervene. So um, in terms of um, getting the biggest value, it would be around prevention as opposed to management of these um, uh, surgical site complications. So at Smith & Nephew, in order, I think this is a new, newer area and we're trying to evolve and move and make sure we are doing the right things. So the key for that is understanding first. Um, so in order to understand the environmental impact of that high-risk patient and the pathway that, that Fiona and others have talked about, um, we partnered with SHC um, to look at this in more detail. And what we've developed is a sustainable surgical pathway that outlines the process that's involved with surgical patient episodes and specifically looking at high-risk patients, um, utilising some of the information and evidence that's best available, um, and then looking at how uh, interventions can have an impact on surgical site complications post-surgery, which then can impact on environmental factors. In terms of how we work with trusts and how we sort of 
try and implement change and work um, work in partnership. Uh, so we use this, uh, the Compass, which is a change management um, program methodology, essentially. Um, and that's a, it's a cyclical process around continual in improvement. So what that does, it facilitate using some of our tools, we can facilitate um, continue, that continuous improvement through uh, pre and post um, data collection that helps identify and measure what goes on along the, along the journey of that high risk patient. And then from that, we can seek to understand where medical products are used and where medical devices might be utilized to improve practice um, and input, impact um, on environmental factors associated with surgical site complication. Uh, and that can include, Dan, if we think post-operative wound care about the frequency of single-use dressings and how they continue to be used or what that knock-on impact is for, into a lo longer-term condition. So just, uh, again, I think this is the final slide, but what does this mean or what could it mean as we, as we go for, forward? So um, this is an example if we compare greenhouse um, gas emissions for patients. So the, first, the example here is um, a typical, typical surgical procedure that takes just over an hour and has an associated length of stay of five days and using SHC um, car um, carbon calculator to, to look at the associated emissions, we can see that that would um, be forecast at around 230 kilograms of CO2 equivalent. And then if we consider that potential complication and particularly in that high risk cohort, um, it's, it's a mapped out example again um, of the associated emissions that rise to 609. Um, and that's due to those, the additional demand being put on uh, the health service to, to manage that. Um, I think in addition to carbon emissions, obviously there are other metrics and measures we would, um, we would calculate and look at as part of that as we, with the work we do. But I think as a conservative top line estimate, it demonstrates the difference that can be achieved with a prevention approach to surgical site complication um, from a for sustainability point of view. And therefore, I guess it's just a, a thought and, and the way we're trying to work with our NHS partners would be to, to work with us to use the Compass program and look at clinical practice and how those products are being utilised, um, look at how medical technology can be deployed um, to have a poten potential reduction in greenhouse gases and emissions, um, and those uh, particularly for those who are deemed as, as high risk. Um, so thank you ever so much for listening. Hopefully it was a good oversight, um, overview and insight into in what we're, the collaboration we're doing. Uh, feel free again to grab us in the break if you want to have a conversation with, with any of the team at Smith & Nephew. And um, I must, must say, so Jackie, the details are on screen there. So um, I'm a stand-in for Jackie today. So Jackie's our sustainability lead and has driven the, uh, has driven the agenda for Smith & Nephew. So it's really unfortunate she couldn't attend. Um, but again, is a really good person if you wish to follow up for further information. Thank you Thank so you. much.